To make your programs more interesting, you might want to create random numbers that control what happens in your program or random things that the user can guess. So this video, I'm going to show you how to create random numbers. The example line right there, double num equals math.random, is the most basic way to create a random number. And what it does is the computer will choose uh, a decimal number between 0 and 1, but not including 1. If you want to, it might be worthwhile typing it in just to make sure that you can do it on your computer. So double num equals math with a capital M dot random. And then we want to see what number it shows. So I'll do system dot out dot print line, and then I'll print num. And we can run this program a couple of times and observe that it creates different numbers. So here I've got 0.919. If I run it again, 0 0.025. If I run it again, 0.176. It helps to think of the range of possible numbers on a number line going from 0 to 1, but the open circle means that it can't generate the value 1. Okay, so by itself, that might not seem very useful. Um, you know, you might want to generate random numbers in a different range with a different minimum and a different maximum. So the usual way to do this is to take the range from 0 to 1 and do mathematical things to it to transform it into the range that you want. So for example, what if you want a number between 0 and 10, but not including 10? What you do is you take that math.random, which you know is between 0 and 1, and you multiply it. You might remember from your math class that multiplication is like scaling or like stretching. So we're stretching the interval that would usually be from 0 to 1, and we're stretching it to be from 0 to 10. If you wanted a number between 0 and 100, you could multiply it by 100 to scale it up to 100. But what if you don't always want it to start from 0? In that case, you can take whatever range you've scaled to, and you can shift it by adding a starting value. So if you wanted to go from 3 to 8, the one way to think about it is 3 is our starting number, and then we're going to add on to that starting number uh, an interval that goes from 0 to 5. Why 0 to 5? Because math.random is 0 to 1, and we've stretched it to be from 0 to 5. So a different way of thinking about this is think about what's the smallest thing math.random could be. Could be 0. So what would I get in this math expression? I'd get 0 times 5 is 0, plus 3. So the smallest random number is going to end up giving us a value at 3 once we put it into this math expression. The largest thing math.random could be is not quite 1. So if I take not quite 1, and I multiply it by 5, I have not quite 5. And then if I add on 3, I've got not quite 5 plus 3 is not quite 8. So the smallest thing math.random could be gives us 3. The largest thing math.random can be would give us not quite 8. And now we have an interval from 3 to 8. Let's look at just one more example like that. So if I want an interval from 5 to 12, I'll start at 5 as my smallest value. And the number I'd have to add to get from 5 to 12 is 7. So I want a random number that I add on to 5 that's something between 0 and 7. So that I'm sure that if it's 0, I'll stay at 5. And if it's 7, I'll get all the way to 12, which is the interval that I want. It may make more sense to imagine this on a number line. So here, we took the interval from 0 to 1 and stretched it to be from 0 to 10. And that's what this code will return as a number somewhere in here. In this example, we stretched our interval to be a length of 5. And you can see that this line is 5 numbers long. But then the plus 3 shifts it right by 3. So we went 1, 2, 3. And now this expression will give us a random number somewhere in this range between 3 and 8. The example here is the same pattern. I have a line whose length is 7 because I stretched it by 7, but then I shifted it right by 5 to get the interval from 5 to 12. So what's the pattern? The pattern is math.random times however long you want your interval to be plus whatever the starting value is. <coughs> As a self-test, 
why don't you see what would you have to do to this line to make it create a random number between four and nine. Pause the video and give it a try. and I'll give you the solution in just a second. Okay, well first I have to think, what's the size of the interval between four and nine? So I think four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's a length of five because I'd have to add five to four in order to get nine. So I'll, oops, so I'll multiply math.random times five to stretch the interval to be a length of five. Um, but this by itself would return a random number between zero and five. And now I wanna shift it so that the smallest possible number is four. So on the outside here, I'll add four. So now I know that if this is zero, my smallest value will be four. But if this is one, my smallest value will be five plus four is nine. Let's go ahead and print out the results just to make sure that we're getting numbers in the right range. So if I run it, I get 6.2. I run it again, seven. I run it again, 7.5. I run it again, 4.0. I run it again, 6.2. So it does seem like it's generating numbers in the correct range. Okay, but a lot of the time you wanna get a random integer, not a random double. So how do you do that? Well, all you do is you cast it. If you remember what casting was, casting means telling a mathematical expression what data type you want it to act like. So let's look at an example. Um, if we're gonna create an integer between zero and 10, first we'll start with math.random times 10, which stretches the interval. But if you put that whole thing in parentheses, and you put the word int right before it in parentheses, what that does is it tells it, take the decimal number and force it to be an integer by chopping off the decimal part. That's called truncating. Um, so it doesn't round it, it just chops off whatever decimal this would have generated. So if you imagine this visually, um, before we cast to int, math.random times 10, is a line that goes from zero all the way up to 10, but when you, but not including 10. And if I'm gonna chop off the decimal part, that's sort of like always rounding it down. So I'll only end up with the numbers zero, one, two, all the way up to nine. Let's apply that same idea here to our last example where we have a random number between four and nine. If we wanted to make an, an integer between four and nine, all we do is put it in parentheses, and right before it, we say int to chop off the decimal. But now, of course, we have to save it into an int variable. Okay, let's run it a bunch of times and make sure we're generating the numbers four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we get six, seven, eight, eight, four, six. So we're generating random integers in the correct range. What if I wanted it to be between four and nine, but including nine. In that case, all I have to do is I have to stretch my interval to be one unit larger. So if I wanted it to include nine, that would be all the way up to not quite 10. And if I think what's the size, like what's the length from four to 10, that's six. So I'd stretch my interval by six to get us from four to not quite 10. And I still wanna shift by four because I want my smallest value to be four. Okay, come back next time to see how you can use these ideas inside actual programs.